All right, MP creates. Uh, these are twenty dollar questions. Why is it so hard to be selfish? How can I unlearn altruism in my daily life and act more selfishly? What do you think of personality tests like Enneagram? And do you think different types are more susceptible to altruism? Um, look, selfishness is difficult only because you're trained two things, to do two things, which you have to overcome. One is to be altruistic. It's to think about other people's first, to feel bad when you do something with negative consequences for other people. Or more importantly, to feel bad when you do something that has positive consequences to you. To feel bad when you pursue your own pleasure, when your own success. To feel bad when you think, oh, I got the raise. Oh, I got a promotion. Oh, I finished this project. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. You're trained to think badly of yourself for all of those emotions and thoughts. And then on top of that, you're taught that morality is not about thinking, that morality is about feeling. So the primacy, you're taught the primacy of emotion. So they undermine you in epistemology by emphasizing emotion, and they undermine you in ethics by telling you that the good essentially is to be selfless. And that's ingrained in you by the culture, by your religion that you might have grown up with, by your parents, every, every part of your life. It's there. It's everywhere in the culture. It's, you know, to win a basketball game, the players have to be selfless. But what does that mean if they win? It's just filled with contradictions and the terminology and the words and how people relate and how people treat you and how people respond and how people talk everywhere, everywhere, every where the culture is, has altruism. So, so you, need, you need to be really committed. And here's the thing. The thing you need to be committed to is rationality. The thing you need to be committed to is rationality and your life. Rationality as a means to your life. Rationality as a means to living. You have to be willing not to go on feelings. You have to be willing to act against your feelings, at least until your feelings catch up to your new values, to your new value system, to your new ideas. And that can take years. That is not easy. And the reason altruism is hard in daily life is because your emotions have not caught up. And your emotions will catch up the more you do, the more you think, the more you act, the more you achieve. And the more you fight them, the more you recognize the emotion, recognize the source as being altruism, reject it, continue on your path. And the more you do that, the more you identify values as selfish values. the more you will be able to get over that residue of altruism, that residue of altruism that primarily lives once you've, once you've philosophically adopted egoism, primarily lives in your emotion, primarily lives in the way these things are integrated, primarily lives in that sense in your subconscious. And that you need to root out, and you root that out by constantly working, constantly identifying. This is what's important to me. These are my values. This is what I'm going to keep fighting for. In regard to personality tests, I just don't know that much about them. I, they say something about you. Does it mean you can't change? No. Are some more susceptible? Maybe. Maybe personalities that are more second-handed or more collective or more social, however you want to define them, tend to also be more altruistic. And then, you know, when you... In, in order to defeat your altruism, maybe you have to change your personality to some extent. Is, are you capable of changing your personality? Absolutely. Up to a point. You can't change everything, but you can change a lot. So what this requires is focus, effort, constant reminder of your values, constant reminder of the purpose of your values, your own happiness, constant striving to those values, 
and constant understanding of where the emotions telling you to be altruistic are coming from. Don't repress them. Identify them, but reject them. Not in a sense of repressing them, in a sense of ignoring them. Continuing to act, feeling them, identifying where they come from, saying to yourself, no, this is inconsistent with my values. I'm not going to act on these emotions. These emotions need to change. So there's a difference between repressing and, in a sense, ignoring when it comes to action. The whole point of objectivism is you don't act based on emotions. And altruism is deeply embedded, in a sense, in your emotions. These are the value judgments you came to when you were a child, when you were growing up, when you had a different philosophy, implicitly. You have to change the value judgments. But changing those values judgments is going to take time. I'm actually going to have to have Gene Maroney on, who does a lot of work around these areas. And uh, we'll talk about that. That'll be a great question for her, MP Creates, uh, when she's on. Uh, later this month on a Thursday. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.